We decided to do this study because I was an early adopter of the Oncotype testing, and I always thought it would be very helpful to uh, decide which patients needed chemotherapy and which didn't. Um, we were certainly giving an awful lot of chemotherapy uh, 20, 10, 20 years ago, and it was exciting to know that there might be some people who could avoid that <clears throat> and all the side effects that's uh, brought with it. Um, so we've done an awful lot of Oncotype testing in the last 10 years, and we thought it would be really good to look at our figures what were the outcomes? Did we keep to guidelines? Was there anything to learn from actually using this in the real world? Um, and that's how the study started. Um, I think Abby can give more details about what we actually found. Um, yeah, so basically we looked over the last 10 years in our cohort of patients in the northeast of England um, at 685 patients uh, data, which covered 714 tumours. Um, and we found that um, Overall, the frequency of relapse was very low in the population. So um, overall, we had 36 relapses. There was only um, two, a 2% rate in the low-risk population. So um, two distant occurrences out of that group of 117 patients. Um, in the intermediate risk group, we had 445 patients, so a bigger um, cut of the pie of, of patients locally. But we again, only saw a 2% rate of um, recurrence in that population, um, with 11 having a distant recurrence and five having a local recurrence. And in the high-risk group, we had 198 patients, um, so only 4% of those relapsed, um, which was eight with a distant recurrence and two with a local recurrence. So overall, the rates were low, which, and this was definitely um, lower figures than what we'd seen in Taylor X. So in Taylor X, you had like a 3% of a risk for low uh, recurrence score patients, a 5% risk for intermediate group and a 13% risk for high group. So you can see our figures are slightly lower, um, which is probably just due to chance, but um, it's really great to see that it is um, safe and effective uh, for patients to have uh, treatment according to the recurrence score. And generally we were really good as well at keeping to the guidelines and um, treating patients in accordance with what the score at the time suggested. Um, so uh, there were only 1% um, of patients in the low risk group that ended up getting chemotherapy and that was predominantly due to patient requests and patient choice. And if you look at our um, patients at the high risk, it was again, only a very small proportion that didn't receive chemotherapy outside of the window of patient choice and comorbidity, so only 3%. So we we kind of had followed the guidance. Um, and when we looked, there was a change with Oncotype um, testing with the parameters that were set for um, intermediate risk over time. Um, so a few years ago, that that changed with the intermediate score um, moving from 18 to 25 down to 11 to 25. Um, so when we um, look back at our patients, we did try and take that into account. And obviously in the with the outcomes of Taylor X, we stopped treating um, women that were over the age of 55 with chemotherapy when they fell into that um, group. So when we look back, um, potentially there were... Um, you know, 29% of patients that could have avoided chemotherapy um, if we had um, that data previously when we'd started out with um, Oncotype DX. So I think um, it, it's kind of nice to see that as well, that um, you can kind of prove in the real world setting that it does have a big impact for patients if you can avoid chemotherapy in that group as well. Um, so overall, I think the results are very, um, very much in keeping with the literature that's out there and, you um, hopefully impactful to kind of confirm that the benefit is there from oncotype testing in the real world. 